the August 1st uh, environmental meeting. Um, we call it to order at 834. If I can have a roll call, Myra. Member Kano? Vice Chair Garcia? Here. Member Evans? Member LaPlante? Member Cover? Here. And Chairwoman Butler? Here. Um, uh, next, I need to appoint Carrie to our committee. So if I could have a motion to, mm -hmm. and a second. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Uh, welcome Carrie, thank, thank you for you. sitting in. Um, so solar update for uh, the solar project, getting closer. Um, any new news on that, Nick? I think public works is getting moving in that direction. The, the solar update for the project, so couple different uh, points on that front. The donation for the building, obviously everything is lined up. We're, we're moving forward project design, it's supply chain issues. It's the, you know, there's a single component in there we're trying to get. We do not want to put the panels on the roof without them being used because obviously they're gonna wear and degrade. So we're making sure we have all the panels, all of the panels, all the equipment, all the materials. So when we put it up, we will put it up. We're hopeful, and I think Jeff, we're still hoping still this fall it will be up in operation. And we are looking at uh, capitalizing on some state grants to actually expand the footprint as well. So Yay, more solar. We're so excited about that. Chair, Thank Chair, you, Nick. Sorry, yes. I have a question. Yeah. Um, are we uh, doing like? Well, obviously, if we put in solar panels, we'll have a reduction in our energy costs, our energy bills. Are we getting? Is the county getting refunded for the electric bill that we'll have, or how are we? Are we being credited? Or? So, so it will be less use that we will have for for our for our campus. So we will have less. So we'll have an absolute dollar for dollar benefit, and we will have by putting it in. There will be comment incentives where we're going to be getting. So we we benefit a couple different ways financially. Will there be an energy buyback? type of program where maybe our nonprofits can benefit off of that? So the energy time. buyback, what you're talking about there, it, I mean, it, it involves a third party getting that in there and us being a governmental entity, it's a little bit more difficult. We're looking at different options with that, but that, that's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, typically in a homeowner, <clears throat> unless you have a way to store that excess, it usually goes back to the grid. Mm -hmm. All righty, next on our agenda is public comment, and up first is Kay McKean. Hi, everybody. Usually I have my scare set on, but today I have my unincorporated uh, unincorporated <laughs> resident <laughs> hat on. <laughs> so I live in unincorporated Milton Township. I've worked really hard on the seven houses on our block to have one hauler over the years. We have six houses all with the same hauler. One still doesn't which means he puts his garbage cans out way early, like the early the day before, and doesn't put them away until the following day after his pickup. So our stuff's out four days a week. There's garbage cans out there and recycling bins. So a comment from one of my neighbors who has four kids. Her kids can't be in our dead end street on the road because there are so many garbage cans you can't see the kids. Recycling bins, garbage cans. So. My biggest thing is that unincorporated residents do not have the same opportunities. I wrote the contract for the city of Wheaton. I helped Elmhurst with their contract. So they have food scrap composting, right? Um, they have lower rates because one truck's going down the road. It's not passing five houses to go to the next house that they get to pick up at. So there's increased traffic on our roads. There's noise, there's air pollution with those big huge trucks, right? Um, I would like to have the same opportunities on one house outside of Wheaton and then incorporated. So they have food, food scrap composting, they have low rates. And in Wheaton, we have barcodes. So they just scan our garbage cans. So Greg and I make very, very little garbage. We compost, we recycle, all those kinds of things. We buy things that don't need to be recycled. So um, we put our garbage can out once every five weeks. Recycling bin maybe every other week, right? And I'm paying more than the residents of Wheaton are paying and they have food scrap composting. They don't, if they don't have a garbage can to fill, right? The truck just goes right on by. Do they have the stickers? No, scan, no stickers to buy. It's a scanner, it's like a barcode. Go buy. It's fabulous what we wrote for Wheaton. So 
Trucks don't have to stop and idle and make pollution, right? They go past if you don't have it out. If you go away for three months, a snowbird or whatever, if, if anybody gets to do that anymore, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't pay for three months. You don't have a quarterly bill. You don't have a monthly bill. It's not in your taxes. You can save money by just putting out your garbage can when it's full and we, or your recycling bin when it's full. I would love to have those opportunities on an incorporated DuPage County and Milton Township. Um, the other thing is, is that in Wheaton and in Elmhurst, we get a document that tells, I'm on the city's environmental commission since 1984. I'm the longest serving commissioner. Um, we get a report from our hauler exactly where they take the recycling, exactly where it goes. We get none of that in unincorporated. So last winter, if you remember, uh, we had a company that was going to uh, landfill all the Christmas trees after telling people to take the lights off, take your ornaments off, don't put it in a plastic bag, and then they were going to landfill all the Christmas trees. We have no protection that our recyclables are really going to be recycled. So I would really love the project to work, um, and I will help in any way. But it's really a problem for residents that they don't understand how much money they could save, that they could have better opportunities to have a bar scan or whatever. It'd be much nicer if people knew what the opportunities were, knew what they could have. So that's why I'm here today. Well, that's your thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Bev. I'll wear the stairs, stairs hat today. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, the Cooking Well project that we have started here in DuPage County, um, it ended in Woodridge, um, but we have a new one here with <clears throat> Lyle Township. To get going so that bin is going to be transferred over there so it'll be um, useful there. Uh, we were at the DuPage County Fair for our STEM of Palooza this past weekend. I don't even know how many thousands of people we talked to. My voice is just now feeling better. Uh, we had several uh, environmental exhibits, the energy bike, recycled paper making. We talked about pollinators. We had the where is away exhibit. We had a reuse area and then we did this other new thing that was um, talking to kids and adults really about magnets and how they're used in sorting recyclable materials like in the sorting centers. So that was really educational for them. It was a new thing for us to do this year. We had our sorting station, of course, and then our pickup five um, and then cleaning out the litter and things like that. So uh, also we gave out the recycling guide to thousands of people, I'm sure like a lot of people were very interested in that guide. So it was a very successful weekend and we're still recovering. So two things, you have your water display here yes, over yes. by the other entrance to the county boardroom. People yep. take a, a look at that because you got grants from the county in order That's to true. build those. Sure. Um, I had a second thing and it just went. Anyway, I'll thank you so much, Beth. Thank yep. you. It'll come to me in yeah, about sure will. a second and a half. Uh, let's see, next on public comment is David Barkins about Dark Sky. Okay. Morning. So I Last time I was here was before summer. Um, and I may have told you we applied for a small grant with uh, Home Depot to build a uh, permanent lighting display for SCARES. And uh, it was granted last weekend. So they're going to assemble it for us. And then SCARES will finish the electrification of it. And they'll have a permanent display talking about good lighting and not so good lighting. That's the good news. Great. Uh, the downside since I talked to you, I think when I started coming a year and a half ago, I said uh, light pollution grows by about two to two and a half percent a year. That was based on technology that we knew, high pressure sodium and the slow growth of the population and the suburbanization or whatever you call it. Um, so they've started coming out with some papers recently and they suggest the rates closer to 10% a year. And that's uh, really just the LED conversions. Um, there's a couple of reasons behind it. Uh, a lot of dust to dawn lighting, a lot of security lighting that's on all night and, uh, and really the blue wavelength content. Um, Adler has now on their website, uh, a statement that says we can see 35 stars at night in Chicago generally. And there's 2,500 available to be seen. So we see about one and a half percent of what's there. Uh, hasn't helped with the Canadian fires, yeah. seen almost nothing this summer, but uh, there's a suggestion that within eight to 10 years, Orion, that's the brightest constellation we have, won't be seen. So sometime in our future, the only thing we may see is a few planets, unless we can change the course. So I used to tell everybody, you grandfather, 
when you create a run into grandfather everything as it is, but that probably isn't a scenario that allows some control of what we've got. So downside, I, upside is, uh, you know, kind of a nice display. So I've changed what I talk about. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Carrie, uh, uh, the only thing on our agenda that requires approval is our minutes from last month. So I'm going to jump to that. Diane, if you could just sit tight, I promise I won't give you a, a space, but because we'll lose quorum without Carrie, I'm going to move forward to the approval of minutes. 23-2509 um, Environmental Committee meeting minutes from Tuesday, June 6th. Second. All in favor? Aye. That motion carries. So thank you so much, thank Carrie, for your... You for sitting in. Uh, all right, Diane Hewitt, please. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Diane Hewitt, and I'm the supervisor of Lyle Township. I'm just going to pass around uh, some information that I'm trying to, I already gave one to all the board members, um, that I'm really trying to get out. In the last year, we've been working uh, quite a bit with SCARES um, for, our, sorry, for our Earth flag um, and to improve ourselves environmentally. Um, so we've really, um, we did a green audit, SCARES came in and really looked at our facilities, looked at what we were doing, gave us a whole list of suggestions. We then took those suggestions and incorporated them into <coughs> what we could do and how we could help the community um, from a county perspective and, and especially from a Lyle Township perspective. So there's, we're, uh, today we're opening up a, um, a program for recycling. Um, there's a variety of different components and we're gonna have a ribbon cutting on September 14th. We'll invite everybody here um, for, the, for the new program. Um, but what we're really trying to do is, is really help to take things out of a landfill, make sure that our facilities are as green as possible from a policies, procedures, and, and a infrastructure perspective. We actually were curious about uh, the county's solar development. We just got a $110,000 grant from the state um, and we plan to use it for solar. Um, so we're actually curious about what you all were doing, how the, we're getting contracts and, or sorry, getting bids and what have you not. And so we're also curious about some of your, thank you, um, input. So, um, but again, from a recycling and uh, environmental perspective, we're really trying to do as much as we can. So any suggestions, we're open to. Um, and we're, like I said, looking forward to making sure that Lyle Township is as green as we can be in the Arboria Village. <laughs> well done, Diane. Thank you so much. All righty, next on our agenda uh, is the 23-24 budget discussion. Good morning. Uh, we are excited. Um, with our 2023 funds, we are working with the building division to do a study on the building code to look at how what it would take to electrify new homes. Um, so we are working on that. Uh, that should be completed um, by the fall. And we'll bring that to this committee as well as development committee. Um, we're also looking at, um, we've identified some boxes with facilities management that are stored over in the care center. Um, and those are boxes that we want to get a shredding contract to go ahead and scan. Uh, as the state permits and then shred and, and get those out of, uh, get, digitize those. Mm -hmm. So that's in our 20, kind of our remaining 23 budget. Um, for our 24 budget, you'll see here, um, I've given you the 23 months, the 24 months, HHW facility is the same at 100,000. Uh, the environmental education contract, um, we've been asked to increase that to 150,000. Document shredding, uh, 8,500. Uh, the environmental summit, we did reduce that a little bit, just um, we reduced it for uh, the fact that they are remote, uh, and so our cost should, should go down on that one. Other recycling events, that would be the sign recycling events, um, any electronics or the propane tanks and such would fall into that category. The marketing and technical videos, we've reduced that because we are focusing on getting those videos completed this year, and then next year will just be the, the boosting in the market videos. Um, the unincorporated hauling, hauling study, you see that zeroed out with an asterisk. Um, that's dependent on where the board uh, falls that, uh, with that decision on uh, the unincorporated hauling project. Uh, In-house recycling signage, we're going to get that done this fall, um, and that would not be an expense in 24. Uh, the sustainable DuPage campaign, we have asked, talked to Choose DuPage, and Greg felt that um, 
he could do the project next year with 60,000. So you'll see the reduction there. Any questions? Sure. I see for the sustainable DuPage campaign, $97.50. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. No, it should have been 97,500. Oh, apologies. <laughs> Sorry, well, that's that. a big jump. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great if we could do it for that, but that yeah. should show a reduction, not an increase. <laughs> Sorry about that. Big typo. Any other questions on that? All righty. And once again, Joy on the uh, EV readiness core. So we wanted to talk to the committee this morning and let you know that we are part of the Mayor's Caucus's second cohort. Um, it's an EV readiness project very similar to the, um, to the SoulSmart project where we're going to be looking through our codes, uh, the building code, zoning code. We're going to be looking at our campus and working with DOT to make sure that DuPage County is, is ready for EVs. Um, and I put in the memo, the categories. So it's a commitment to EVs, zoning planning, permitting, safety and training, parking and access, new construction. Parking and access will be at the campus here is where we're covering that. We're working with facilities and the energy efficiency conservation block grant to add EVs to the campus. So new construction, we've been working with the Division of Transportation and Animal Services on their new buildings. They will at least have the conduit in place so that they are ready for the transition to EVs when we reach that time. Um, we'll be engaging with ComEd, with the caucus, community engagement, and market development. So that's the category that kicks off next week with the caucus. Google. There is an event. Yeah, there is an event with uh, a big kickoff next week. All right. Keep going, Joy. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions on that one before I move on? Yeah, I know. Um, I took a look at your memo, um, and I wasn't sure how long this process would take and when it would be finished. That's an excellent question, and one I cannot answer yet. Um, I'm not sure. I know that they started with the other, the first cohort in January. Yeah. So I would say six yeah. to eight months. Uh, is my guess. Um, I, I will, after the event, I will report back and let you know what their expected time frame is for that. Next is the uh, Grow Geo Chicagoland update. So I wanted to share this with the committee. Uh, we have been participating with uh, Citizens Utility Board, the Geothermal Alliance of Illinois, Midwest Renewable Ener Energy Association with Grow Geo. Um, it's very similar to this. Um, our solar, solarized Chicagoland effort where we're trying to encourage installations of geothermal units. Um, I did receive the update that they've had 570 attendees at their power hours, which is, I think, for the inaugural year, this is amazing. Um, so 120 uh, attendees signed up for, uh, to get a quote. So, and there are now 31 organizations partnering with uh, that, the Grow Geo program. What I think is very impactful is they've had seven installers that are participating, which was low, but it's actually encouraged other installers to add uh, geothermal to the mix of uh, services that they are offering. Uh, they've even said one of these installers has been connected with two of the participating installers to, dis to discuss job shadowing. So while the project hasn't necessarily resulted in immediate geothermal installations, it's really had an impact in the in with the installers, with the industry, if you will. Ramping up the knowledge at least. Yeah. Any questions on that one? And that is a zero cost program to the county, by the way. Awesome. And uh, I saw a geothermal years ago, a building out, an old, old, old building out in Alburn I used to work in. They they I think they got a grant to put um, geothermal right next door because that was the only way they could air condition that building but what a great benefit it was to be able to have the land to do that uh, next the uh, statewide recycling needs assessment that, act so another exciting well sort of exciting so as you recall earlier this year we talked about the um, the extended producer responsibility for packaging and paper products uh, legislation that was proposed in Springfield um, after much negotiation um, it ended up that they did pass strictly doing this recycling needs assessment, which is basically the first step in the process anyway. So it wasn't necessarily a loss. It was kind of, a, it was a partial win and that we did get this. Um, so this is something that the state is going to be working on here. They'll be bringing on a contractor consultant uh, shortly by July of next year to really start looking in at statewide. It's 
where does recycling exist? What products are being uh, put out on the market in Illinois? And where do we need recycling and where are things going? So it's really the, the cost aspect of the EPR um, legislation. So we are looking forward to participating um, and watching how this, how this unfolds. So any questions? Question on that? Awesome, anybody have any old business? I'm just, just all one quick thing. So this I'm very excited about the EV, you know, readiness oh, yeah. cohorts. I know, I know we came to an environmental meeting and we're talking about it and that's where, you know, so I, I'm very excited. Any information you can get about that, you know, I definitely will be working at to get the facilities ready for that. And so. thanks for your efforts on public works to kind of gently move that along as well. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Good. Uh, any new business? Sorry. So I just wanted a little show and tell. I went to California um, back a um, few months ago, or not two months ago, yeah. a few weeks ago. And I wanted to show this plastic bag. Now they don't generally use these type of, I mean, bags in general over there. You have to bring your own bag if you go to the grocery store. But we didn't have our own bags because we were on vacation. Um, but so we did see this bag and it's quite different from what we see around here. Um, it's a, this could be used 125 times. It's a different material. It is reusable. It is washable. And um, instead of putting it in, in your recycling bin, there's a store drop off. So you, it's a different type of plastic that can be dropped off. It's more store? sustainable. Yes. And it is recyclable. Okay. In California, use this? Um, yeah. So a lot of the stores in California do this type of material. I can pass it around so you can feel it. I was going to bring paper straws too, but mine was gross. Yeah. So. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> now that you mentioned that when we were in Texas last weekend, there were uh, compostable straws that they offered uh, at the restaurant except they are not suitable for people who have a gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. which I didn't, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just like the other thing too, I wanted there. to mention, Sadia, is yeah. those are not, curb, no, even the old style bags are not curb, like the yeah. curbside recycling. Right. You gotta no. take them all back to the I know, store. I know, But this is, I mean, you can use it a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 does, it does feel a lot different. Yeah. Well, come on, you know. You know. <laughs> I haven't seen these type of bags here. No, that's cool. Yeah, so it was different. If I we reuse it. them, yeah. Yeah, I forgot at the last meeting, but I, I remember this month. I, gotta, I saved it for you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Right. Right. And they make great money. No. <laughs> for sure. Any other new business? You know. So that actually reminds me, thank you, Sadia, um, that there are these straws that I recently saw. They're called bait. They're completely compostable. They're eco-friendly, they're marine friendly, um, and they feel like plastic actually, so they don't totally degrade, you know, after like an hour of walk in the water or something. Um, but it's P-H-A-D and P the Fade products. Um, there's a really extensive website, and um, I would love to see if we could incorporate that more in the county and see if we can even pass that um, down Springfield see if we can get less plastic and um, more marine friendly, eco-friendly straws. I am working with cafeteria services on um, a, a, a drink lid that doesn't require a straw to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like the Starbucks lids or <laughs> something like that. Then, then we can eliminate straws altogether, which would be as good, I think. So <clears throat> any other new business? <laughs> Seeing none, hearing none. Um, we're adjourned.